Hello and welcome back for class. Now in this class we'll be looking at bootstrap. Now we've already learned HTML and CSS and we learned that HTML is a markup language, CSS is a styling language. Um we've not done JavaScript, but then um it is good for us to learn bootstrap now, even though bootstrap is a is a library that consists of HTML CSS, and JavaScript, but then uh, we want to use Bootstrap majorly for, you know, um, layouting, you know, doing the HTML and CSS stuff mostly. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is this. We are not going to, you know, really waste much time on Bootstrap. We're just going to look at a few things, utility classes, um, how to do flavors and grid, how to create a responsive website with um, Bootstrap. Those are the things we'll be looking at basically. Then, as time goes on, um, every project we'll be doing, or for some of the projects we'll be doing, we'll be applying Bootstrap to style them, right? So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, what is Bootstrap? Bootstrap is a CSS library. Now, most times people call it CSS framework, but then it's a CSS library, right? Now, it's used for, you know, doing things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, let me just... Well, what I'll do is this. I'll go to the official website, just search for bootstrap.com, right? Now, this is what you get, you see. Okay, this one is taking me to the website. So, I want just search for bootstrap on your browser. Mm, if you search for bootstrap on your browser, this is what you get. You see this bootstrap, the most popular HTML and JavaScript library, right? So, bootstrap, this is so, as you know, you see a lot of things. Bootstrap, this is so. What we are looking for is getbootstrap.com, right? When you click on this link, it will take you to getbootstrap.com. Or the first one will also take you there, right? So this is their documentation. The one I clicked take me to, took me to the documentation. Let me click on this place. Now, this is where you see the landing page. Build fast, responsive site with Bootstrap. Now, powerful, extensible, and feature-packed front-end toolkit. Build and customize with SaaS and so on and so forth, right? Now, what they are trying to tell us is that Bootstrap is that UI library that enables us to build um, our UIs very fast, right? So, without having to write CSS, codes, you know, we we'll build up uh, UIs, the user interface of our website very fast without having to write more CSS code, right? Now, how is that done? That's done by the use of, or it's done by applying Bootstrap classes. Now, remember very well when we were learning HTML and CSS, I told you something. I said um, it is very good to, you know, have um, just one ID, right? And it is also good for us to have uh, many classes. That's what I said. So, um, I don't know if you really got what I meant by that the other time, but then, uh, I don't know if you could remember very well. I said most of the front end framework they use classes, right? Because classes are not unique, but IDs are unique. So I'm going to be seeing more of that. So let me add the folders to workspace. So if I click on file, add for that to workspace, desktop, this is okay, tell me. right? So, um, so let me just create a new folder here. I'll call it Bootstrap. Bootstrap, right? Or Bootstrap class. Let me just call it Bootstrap class. Rename. Right? Now, as usual, we're going to create our index.html. So that's what we're going to be working with. Now, we've seen Bootstrap. Now, how do we apply Bootstrap? Now, there are different ways to add Bootstrap to our web page or to our, our application or our project. Now, the first, we can add Bootstrap by, you know, um, grabbing the CDN. Now, what CDN means? CDN means Content Delivery Network. It's just, um, we're making use of a link or a live link that's um, linking to their library. And, um, you know, we can then pull off stuff to use, like pull off their classes, their component and so on and so forth. So let me just share my screen so that you see it. So if I share screen, entire screen, this and this, right? Like we said, we said uh, with this now, I can build fast, responsive sites without having to write um, CSS code. Remember, 
in order for me to build this responsive website last week, um, you notice what we did. Yeah, if you look at this one now, you see the style, you see the CSS code, it's very long. Like, we start writing codes from here, then we also take off responsive codes by doing this, targeting different screen width and so on and so forth. Well, Bootstrap, with Bootstrap now, I don't need to pass through all of these stress, all of these processes. Are you following? You just want me to, you know, start giving my, start doing my responsiveness while I, while I'm, um, I was it called? While I'm writing my HTML code, so you can see that Bootstrap makes work easier. If I would Bootstrap, you don't even need to have a CSS file, just HTML file, you're done. Now, like I said, how do I add Bootstrap? Now, there are two ways. The first way is by making use of a CDN, and I said CDN uh, means Content Delivery Network. That's the same. It's a way that enables us to connect with the library such that we can be able to pull up classes, uh, components, and any other thing we want to use from the library, right? So it's just with the help of just one single link. Then also, if I want the JavaScript interactivity, let me say I created an a, I created the hamburger button and I want it to you know um be interactive when i click on it to show open i need to copy the javascript link as well right then the other way is by the use of um, npm so i can decide to come here now we do npm install bootstrap right or uh, maybe i could download the starter files and so on and so forth but then for simplicity what will happen is that we're going to be making use of the cdn right now if you see now they said see the first they say install via package manager so i can say install bootstrap so install bootstrap source and javascript files via npm right so i can do all of those stuff and all of those things so i can do this this right that's if i'm doing a react project or uh maybe uh what is it called okay see so the set composer maybe lab project or any of the other stuff or meteor js or things like that but if i want to um just work on a simple project i could just take this one so let me take this one now if i come back to my file right uh inside my index of tcml this is what will happen inside my index of tcml i could bring up my boiler plate like this sorry let me change my team to dark team i'm not used to this light team just that um okay uh okay let me change it this is not going to be one i like using color team oh good this is what i like using now um if i see h1 i can say hello sorry I can say hello world, right? So if I do this, I right click. If I open this with live server, what what I'm getting hello world, right? And now I can copy this bootstrap CDN link, right? Remember this is a CSS file. Now every CSS file is supposed to go into the head. If I do this and see what will happen, you notice that um what do you notice? What do you observe from these two stuff? Let me see if you are following. The font style. The font style changed, right? Good. That's yes. saying that Bootstrap is now working, right? Now Bootstrap, I could do things like this. I can add a class. I can say class of text, right? Text primary, right? If I do something like this and come back, you notice that the text color has changed, right? Now, remember, if I want to do this with CSS, I need to go to a CSS file and do something like background color, this. So, you can see that will boost you up just to apply class names and it will change, right? If I come back here, I can do something like, um, I can do something like, uh, what's it called? BG primary, right? Now, if I do BG primary, BG primary will give you primary background color. Are you following? Now, if I do that, you can see what I'm getting. So you can see that bootstrap is very easy to add and things like that right now let's say i have a lot of text here let me say i have paragraph and i have lorem 2000 right now don't forget you know that most of our design our web page we say we don't want the text to span from one end to the other end right now i think prior to bootstrap 5 because the current version of bootstrap now is um bootstrap 5 there's a class called John Bootstrap. I think that is in Bootstrap TV. I don't think that was even applied in Bootstrap. I really can't remember because I'm not the type that likes Bootstrap before. I, you know, I started using Bootstrap when I noticed that I'm more. I have a lot of work to do within a short period of time. Let me see. John Bootstrap. John Bootstrap. I don't think John Bootstrap class works now. I see it's not even working. So the class that works is container class, right? 
So Jumbotron just a class that gives this um what's it called this spacing and this kind of um it, there's a kind of background color it gives. But let's see if we use container. Eh? Container is a class that pushes your stuff from both sides of the screen. So if I come back here, this is what I'm getting. That's the container class. Can you see it? Now there are different uh, versions of the container class. There's container fluids, container whatever, whatever. So they are very much. You can see that when I'm going to move by, the space is reducing just as we did when we we're doing our CSS. Remember, for larger screen, we want the space to be much, right? But when we are going to small screen, we are reducing that um space. So the same thing also happens here. Now there's different there are different classes of that container. So we'll check them later on while looking at the documentation. You can see that. We're building web pages with Bootstrap. I don't really need to stress myself. Now, um, Bootstrap has uh, what is it called? It has components. It also has utility classes, right? So I wanted to take note of that. Now, when we say component, what do we mean? If we come to the official documentation, let me just add the JavaScript link because we might decide to use this component later. On. So in order to be on the safe side, just grab the JavaScript and the what is it called? And the CSS link. So let me just grab it and put it over here. Remember, this will be at the footer. So let me just remove this guy. Oh, okay, good. Let me put this one over here. All right now, take note of this. Now, now, what is that guy doing? Let me just show you what he's doing. Let me say I go to um, the documentation for instance, then I go to um, components, right? Then I pick. Let me say I pick this nav bar, right? Then I click on this. It's just to copy this code. Now that is a bootstrap component, bootstrap nav bar. Now if I place this over here, yeah, and let me assume that this JavaScript code it was not here before. If I save this, come back here, right? What should we happen? If I go back to my web page, I'm getting, I'm having this nav bar over here, right? Now this nav bar is responsive. Now what do I mean by that? When I'm going to small screen, I don't need to write any JavaScript code or do anything. You can see this hamburger has come out. Remember from that video, this was all we were trying to achieve at the end. Is that also? If you remember from that video. Now, if I click on this thing, it won't work, right? Why is it not working? Because the JavaScript code or the JavaScript CDN that's supposed to do this for me is not there. So all I need to do is to come back and enable the JavaScript CDN. Is that also? So if I come back now, and uh, click on this. You can see that it's now working. You get so you can see that Bootstrap is really, really sweet and easy to work with. You know, beginner friendly, unlike Tune CSS, which is more of utility class. But then Bootstrap has its drawback. You get now if you want to be a uh, what's it called a full front end developer, you don't need to focus on Bootstrap alone. You need to learn the other frameworks as well. And that's one. And again. Bootstrap works are really easy to tell. Like if you see most of the Bootstrap stuff, you see this fat hamburger button, it's really easy to tell that this thing is built with Bootstrap. So as a front-end developer, you need to master your CSS very well because in some cases you you meet clients that would want you to use Bootstrap for them. It means you are lucky. Why in some cases as well? You meet clients that want you to use still win CSS for them. In some they will say, okay, they don't want you to use any framework, they want you to use pure CSS for them. You get because as a front end developer, you should you should uh, you should be expecting to work with different classes of people, right? You be expecting to work with a back end developer, other front end developer, collaborate on different projects. Some will tell you that okay, we've started this project, so I'm not making use of Bootstrap, I'm making use of pure CSS, or they will say they want you to create your own CSS library, your which is your own um, CSS framework, something like Bootstrap. So they will have uh, maybe a file whereby they will um, put their color variables or most of their utility classes. So you have to follow those patterns. You get so, but then you still need to learn Bootstrap. It's still essential. Like it's still a skill that is um, you know required in this modern days. So if you look now, this is the Navbar brand. The Navbar brand talks about the logo. This is the, these are the links. Then this is a drop down for you. This is just like a template for you to follow. Like if I want to design a web page now, it's just for me to come here and change that logo. I can go back there and do something like this. Also come back here. Uh, where's that guy? I'll say okay. Let me just change my title first. I'll say this is. Oh, let me say bootstrap class, right? 
Then for my navbar brand, I can do something like um, dishes, right? Academy, right? So now if I come here, now, now you see that that's not changed. Now I can see whom about, right? Now this disabled class, it doesn't really make sense. It's just for me to remove it. You get now in Bootstrap. Forget that this thing is already in, this thing has already been built by professionals, but then there are some things you will not need, right? So that's the essence of learning Bootstrap. You also need to learn how to customize Bootstrap, right? So I can come back there. I can remove this guy, right? Then now, if I this one, I don't need it as well. I don't need this well as well, right? So um, I don't need this. Okay, that's a divider. Okay, I might decide to leave down. Then now I can do something like this. Boom, right? I can say about, right? I can say contact. Right? I can see account. Inside this account, what I will do, I will do something like this. Account. Right? I can see login and register. I can see login. Right? So I can do something like this. Let me just remove this one. Oh, sorry. Let me just um, bring this guy down. I will say something like register. Just watch what I will get when I go back. If I do this and see, this is what I'm getting. So when I click here, I'll see login and register. You can see that this thing is way easy to work with. Now, if you look at the Nava, the Nava is having a bright color. I can decide to make it dark, right? The other classes I can add, like I said, yeah, in Bootstrap, what you make use of is um, usually classes. So if you look at the Nava itself, this is the Nava, right? This is the container fluid kind of Nava. So I can change it to just pure container. Now, the difference between container fluid and pure container is this container fluid spans across the um, end of the screen on sorry in all widths. Can you see what I'm having? It spans across the end of the screen. Now if I change that to ordinary container, let me say I remove this fluid and change it to ordinary container. Just watch what I will get. This is what I'm having. Now it doesn't span across the end of the screen, right? But when I'm getting smaller, what will happen to adjust the set? So in most cases I like working with container. Right, now that's what I work with. And also, I can come back here for the what's it called for the Nava. I can see I need the Nava dark. Let's see, Nava. Okay, good. Now, what Nava dark we do is we give it light text so I can now see BG dark. Right, so if I do something like that, what should I get? Uh, Nava, I'm coming. BG da, BG da, BG da. I'm coming. So let me see. Nava lights. Uh -huh. Nava lights will give me a light text. So BG da is supposed to. Uh, did I make a mistake on my spelling? Uh, okay. Hmm. Just so down. Okay. Nava da, right? Uh, Easy problem. I'm coming. Let me search something. This doesn't work as well, right? Hmm. Nava dark. BG body teacher. Oh. Oh. I think this is the class that's spoiling it. I'm coming. On. Okay. So let me see. If I see BG dark. Let me see. Okay, good. That's what's spoiling it. So that's a class of BG body test. I don't know what that class is actually doing though. So you can see what I'm what I'm having now, right? Now if you look at this color, this is green. It doesn't really fit well with my you know my color stuff. I can change it now. Green is a class green in bootstrap is success. I can decide to change it. I can say okay. If I don't want that green color, I can come back here. Where is it? For that search um button, I can see BTN, BTN outline primary. Right, so I can change it to primary color. Now, primary is a blue color. This is what I'm having. Now, as you can see, now it's just me playing with bootstrap. Um, what is it called? Bootstrap classes I already know before, right? Now, what does that mean? It means we need to learn these bootstrap classes, right? We need to learn them and how they work and so on and so forth. Now, before we continue, let's just start with bootstrap colors first. Um, bootstrap colors. Now, in bootstrap, um, we have uh, what is it called? How many major colors? Primary. 
I don't, I can't really remember. Maybe we might, you know, have to look up the documentation or so, things like that. So in Bootstrap um, colors, I think we have either five or six major colors, right? So let's start with Bootstrap colors, right? So let's see now. These Bootstrap colors are primary, right? So what I will do, I will just say something like this, each one, right? I will say primary. Then I'll give this one a class of primary. I'll say class of text primary. Now, you know, colors can be applied in different ways, right? I can apply color as a border, right? As a background color and as also a text color. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be applying it as a text color. Let me put it under my nav, right? So this take note of this, take note of this, uh, take note of this. So I'll see um, bootstrap, okay, primary. Now also, on this body, I'm going to give a class of container as well. So I'll just say dot container, right? So that um that uniform spacing will be applied all through the website, right? So if I save this, now this is what I'm having. So a primary color, right? Then also there's all call the tertiary color, each one. Sorry, the sources color. So I'll come here outside in the class of text sources right now sources means sources is green color right so i'll see success so if i see this now this is what i'm getting now instead of this i'll just split my screen into two equal half i think this will be faster now text sources is what will give me that uh, coming okay good text sources is what will give me that and also i need this one i need a class of text danger right now danger is red color so if i see danger right and that's red color now these colors i've already uh, i've you know i've read them i've studied them that's why i know them so you have to read them and study them right so as we go further i just try to um, remember them there's all called text warning right uh, warning is yellow color i guess so let me just say warning mm one right so that's yellow color but bootstrap yellow is you know pure yellow it's kind of a good yellow something like that then now i have the uh, what is it called the info color right and um, text info right i think this um is it that blue let me see um say info okay good kind of a light blue then there's all called the secondary as well no, when primary comes up, the next thing people want to see is secondary. So let me just put secondary over here. Uh, so I'll just say secondary. Right? So good. So it's kind of an, uh, a gray color, something like that. So these are the one, two, three, four, five. This is basic colors in Bootstrap. So what will happen in order to be on the safe side? Let's just check. I will say Bootstrap colors. Right? Let's just search for them. Sharp colors. Okay, you can see I have the. So let me just see. Click on this link. Let's see what it take us to. Okay, I have the primary, secondary sources, danger one, info, light, and dark. Right. So you can see that more here. Yeah, so I have the light. You know what light is now? Light is a, a white text, right? So if I do this, if I want a, a white text, I can see text light, right? So. Right, we will see an example. We saw an example just now, right? When we did the BG light or so the BG dark. So we also have the dark. We have muted as well. So I can, you know, I like this as a dark, right? So this is dark. There's also muted. Sorry about that. I was supposed to say dark, right? There's muted. Uh, okay. I think the light and dark is still the same thing as text white, text black. Almost the same though. So let me just see text white and text black. Let's see if there's any difference. Then let me put the muted. The muted is similar to, let me just see, shall, let me just show you. So I say class, say text, muted, right? So I say muted text, right? So let me save this and let's view on our browser. So can you see what I'm having? So this is the text light. Let me see text white. Huh? So this place I'll change it to text white. 
uh, let me see, I have white, okay, I have black, right? And text black. Right, so let me see. Okay. <laughs> now, the text white and the text black. Um, I will say there are variations of the text light and dark. You get now these colors I'm having here. We can give them a variation, like we can give something like text light 500, text this 50, things like that, just to specify um how dark it should be or how light it should be. So I think that's what's happening here. So I have not used this white and black before. What I normally use is light and dark. You get so, but if you go to the documentation now, this is what I'm noticing. I saw text black 50, text white 50. So it means that we can change as you call the appearance. Are you following? So please take note of this stuff. We can specify how dark we want the text to be or how light we want them to be, things like that. So, but for the basic colors in Bootstrap, are these primary, secondary? Sources danger one info light dark and muted you get so muted text is just like uh it's similar to the second you just like you want your text but you don't want it to be that dark you just want it to be there but you don't want it to be that dark so that's what the muted is doing right so these are um bush sharp colors right so if i want a black if i want a background color now just to say bg dark so just for examples like um this light and this thing now I can come back here. So okay, I want it to have a BG dark so that the text will stand out. I also want this one to have a BG dark. I'll come back here. So I want this one to have a BG dark as well so that the text will stand out. Can you see what I'm having? So these are the, um, the things you should take note of in Bootstrap. So these are the classes. Then now, uh, so these are the color codes. So let's go back to the documentation. There's something I want to look at. Uh, let's not look at component directly. Let's look at getting started into Dutch. Okay, we've seen all those ones. So let's look at um, mm, No, I don't want to look at layout content. I want to look at utility classes. Now these forms I'm coming. You see this uh, what is it called? This layout content forms. Those are kind of uh, the advanced part of it. Yeah, but then let's just look at the simple things. Let's look at this um, customized overview okay um this is so you can read up these guys later on let's see i think okay 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 I'm coming options okay let's look at colors okay color is just is what we just looked at now right so this is how to do colors okay it's color the only utility class okay okay fine fine this is this color so let's talk about something else now if you look now, they said color modes, right? So you can go through these color modes later on. But now let's talk about something. I just remember something. Let's talk about how to give font size and things like that and so on and so forth. Now, if I come back here, hmm, remember we said we have different types of editing. We have editing 1, editing 2, and so on and so forth. Now, right? So let's talk about other classes, hmm, other utility classes. Let's do it this way, right? Now, if I have something like a paragraph, right? I say this is a paragraph, right? Now, if I save this and come back to my, what's it called? I want this one to be inside this guy. I'm sorry about this. I want them to be, all of them to be inside the container, right? So if I look at this guy now, I can give it a class of display, display one, let me see. Now, this is what this display one class is doing. Now, this bootstrap display class is a class that is used to bring a big text, but then the text will not be bold. Are you following? A light big text. But if I want this text to be bold, I want it to be like uh, a H1 or a HD1. I can say class H1. And if I do this and save, this is what I'm having. Now, that paragraph tag is not styled like a HD1 tag, so please take note of that. Right? Then now, I can apply different things. So, Let's just learn about the display class. I can say display, right? Display two. If I say display two, display two is similar to display one, but then it's smaller, right? Compare display one is bigger, so it turns in display six, right? Display six is smaller, so please take note of that. And also, let's um, take note of. Uh, so let me just do something like this: a, a comment. I'll say display one to six in Bootstrap, right? 
and also the comment I will see heading uh so I will see each one to each six classes in bootstrap as well. This class is just like a freestyle class, just you know, just try and pull up. Then now uh let me just call this one each each theory. Let me just call this each theory. So later on you can you know you can learn more things about it. So it means that if I have any element of my choice, I can decide to style them like this, right? So please take note of that. Um so take note of that. Then now the next thing we'll learn about is font style, sorry, font size and things like that. So I can do something like this. Um let me see, I have a small text now, right? I'll say I am a small text, right? Now for this small text, I could decide to make it big. I can do something like this class. Uh or say uh text uh is it large? Uh huh, I've forgotten how to do font size in bootstrap. Let me see. No, this is not it. I'm coming. Mm, text large. No, this is not it. I think this, the display is what I use to give them. Uh, the display classes are what I use to give them. Uh, what is it called? Text size and things like that. Font size and things like that. Let me see. Bootstrap. Font. I'm coming. Size. Mm. <laughs> Good. I've seen them. FS. FS is the name of the class. So. I could do something like this. If I want to give it font size, I could say F S um, five. Let me see what this will give me. Uh, so you can see the text is now big, right? So I could do something like this. F S one. You can see one is usually the biggest. So I can say F S six, right? So six is the smallest, right? So let me see seven. There's no, okay, there's seven. Let me see. Okay, this one ends in seven. Um, I don't think there's seven. That one looks like the default class. The default class. Like if there's no class. So I think it ends in six. Let me see. If I remove this guy and save. So yes, that's the default class. If I say class of um, FS7. You get so it ends in six. Please take note of that. So please take note of this. So I can see FS classes. FS classes right so this is this about text size and things like this um are you can i ask a question yeah sure ask a question um, i want to like i want to add background color and then um, also make the text size big yeah sure am i going to use two classes yeah you you, you know an element can have more than one class i can see bg bg primary right fsc so what should i get that is what i'm having now, if I want to change the display of this guy to block, I can have to change it. Remember, I will say block element, they take the full width. I can say D block. This is what I'm having. So it's not taking up the full width of that, um, what is it called? The full width of the screen. So if I want the FS to be theory, this is what I'm having. I can have to change the text also. I can say text light, right? And this is what I'm having. So you can apply many classes. So it's just like you want to style this thing to your teeth. You get I can have to do something like rounded, rounded will give me a round border, right? I can add border if I want to. You get so please take note of that, take note of that. Then now the next thing I want to do is button. Let's talk about bootstrap button. So I'll say buttons in bootstrap. Now if I want to create a button, if you say button and say click me and I see it. Uh, now I'm coming for the sake of um this let me just do something. I'll say D. I uh, see style padding 100 pixel. I don't want to get to the end of the screen, that's good. Now, if I say click me, right? Now, if I come here and apply a BTM class, if I say class BTM. Now, this is what the BTM class is doing. Now, BTM class has applied the bootstrap button class to this. That's why it's not like this. So I can now see BTM primary, right? Now, this is what I'm having now. So please take note of this. So I can do something like this. H R. Can you see what I'm having? So this is a bootstrap button. So if I want a what's it called? If I want a red button, just to see danger, right? Let me just say delete. Let me just put this one as delete. Right? I see BTN, BTN, 
Etienne Deja, right? This is what I will get. Are you following? So delete, click me, so I can do something like this. BTN, BTN success, so come in BTN, BTN success, right? So this, uh, this would be uh, verify, right? So I can do something like this, pending, right? So pending will be for color of like, uh, let me say warning. Right, so I can do something like this pending. Right, so you can see the event is I'm having. Now you can see that this thing is really colorful, right? Work, working with Bootstrap is really nice. Most time when I develop, when I'm designing a website, I do normally go and pick Bootstrap colors to use. I just check the color code because I like Bootstrap colors. You know, as a developer, sometimes we know we are normally faced with issues of colors and so on and so forth. So most time I just go and pick Bootstrap colors. Now use them. Now, now this bit, this button, I can do something like BTN group. So I can do something like this. I'll say, uh, I'll do something like div. I'll say class BTN group. BTN group does is that um, button group is a way of um, what's it called? I'm coming. Okay, good. I just like using a shower. Come, let me just use a shower. A shower will do everything else. Okay, good. Now, BTN group is a way of grouping those buttons together so that they will act in form of as if they are one. Yet, so in most cases, you, I know you've seen some website whereby the buttons are close together like this. It means they are using Bootstrap button group, right? So please take note of this. You can decide to use this. You can decide to use this. Any one of your choice, depending on what you are creating. I want to ask a question. Yeah, sure, ask a question. I'm using Bootstrap to design a website. Can I also use CSS? Sure, you can use CSS. Just for sure, we have now. Now, if you look at this voting primary, right? This BTN primary is a class. Is that also? It's a class now, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, we see something. We said the purpose of learning Bootstrap as a front-end developer is to learn how to use it and as well learn how to, learn how to customize it, right? Now, if I come yes. back to my index.html and I create a custom CSS, let me see. I created the style.css file, right? Then now, inside here, I will link my CSS by doing something like this and see from CSS, right? I come back here yeah. and say, okay, I want to target my BTN. She is a class, BTN primary. So, background, BTN primary. You can see the um, background color red, right? If I do that, this is what is happening. It's not affecting it. You can see this thing is not changed to red, right? But that is not even what I want. Now, in some cases, but it won't work for you, right? So, you need to do things like um, applying the, what's it called? You need to apply the important flag, right? So those are the things I wanted to take note of. Uh, what can I use to demonstrate that? Uh, what can I use to demonstrate that? Okay. Okay, good. Uh, okay, this guy is on top. Okay. Now, yeah, I'm coming. Let's take for instance, eh? this guy is above our CSS link. So it's above our bootstrap link. And I apply this flag. What shall we happen? Can you see what is happening? This is what happened. Nothing. Now, let me show you something. If your custom CSS link, eh, this custom CSS you have now, if the link is above your bootstrap link, or let me say your bootstrap link is under the um, custom CSS link, it means that mm -hmm. you know that in CSS or in programming, what comes last is what we, um, what we work now, right? Just like you're applying to yes. CSS, the one that comes last is what we work. Yes, that's what is happening here now. You can see that this guy comes last, so the bootstrap stuff is now working. Now, remember the time that this link was under the uh, under the bootstrap link. Notice that the color of the button is now red, right? But now when it's above it, see what is happening. When it's above it, the color is now blue, right? Uh -huh. Now, if I want this thing to be red, I can come here and do something like this important. So if I see it, this is what is happening. The color is not red. Now, what does this mean? This important flag is making it such that 
no matter what is happening, I want this color to overshadow uh, what's it called, to take effect. So, notwithstanding what is happening, even if I'm adding the blue sharp class or doing anything, I want this color to take effect. That's what this important flag means. So, me designing my web page now, what, what is primary color first? You need to understand what primary color means. The primary color of your web page, please, your background noise. Primary color of your web page eh, is that color that is, um, should I say, mostly used or mostly seen, things like that. Because that's what primary color means. Now, let's say I'm designing a website and the website is having colors like, um, let me see. Okay, good. Let me just show you this website now. For this website, eh? So for a website like this, if I want to pick a primary color, just watch. Look at this movie website now. Hmm? Copy path. If I paste this website now, if I want to pick a primary, oh Jesus! I remember to the while I was teaching, I had to remove this tie. So I'm coming. Uh, now, if I want to pick a primary color for this website, what do you think my primary color would be? Huh? Can you hear me? Hello, Pascal, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? For this website, what do you think my primary color will be? Hello? Yes. What do you think my primary color will be? Are you with me? Yellow. I can't even close the chat, but you wanted to see yellow. So you get so the color that is mostly seen on the web page that is your primary color. So if you look at this one now, you already know that my primary color is this yellow, right? Uh -huh. So that's just it. So that's on website now. Let me show you the other one. The other one will be so this landing page website. Now, what color do you see most? Now, take note your primary color. In most cases, it's not this white and black. Though you might see white, see black a lot, but don't. It's not good to take them as primary color. If you look at this website now, you know that my primary color is what? This blue, right? So that just how to pick primary color of your web page. So that just is. So you can see, okay, since your website, this the primary color of your website is this one, right? You can decide to make this particular color your primary color of your bootstrap page. Are you following? So that just how to pick a primary color. Then you cannot come back here, right? Where you want to um, give this custom styling. You can do something like this. So your primary color should be that color, right? You can say primary color should be ash. Um uh, EF, EF. But you not say background color. This is what you do now. You now say something like um okay, 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 okay. Just this bit here. Um background color. You can do something like this. You can see uh, what's it called? Um ash. Let me just pick something. Let me see. Um zero 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 zero. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? But now I want to um, choose something. So let me just go. So I can pick this as my primary color. If I do this and save, hmm? by the time I come back to the web page, you notice that, uh, okay, I'm sorry. I think I've lost this stuff. <laughs> so good. Can you see what I'm having as my primary color? It has not changed yet though, right? In order for this to change, I would need to give you this important flag, right? I need to do something like this and save. You can see that my primary color is this now. I will change the border as well. I can say border. I can set border to none, right? Okay. And I'll give you this important flag so that it will work, right? Or if I don't want to change the border to none, I can do something like this as border color, right? I'll say ash. Okay. I'm coming A five C four. Okay, you give this and I'll say not uh, this important flag as well. All right, so you can see now that's my primary color. So you want to ask a question? This um bootstrap, this bootstrap. Yeah. Does it come with over effect? Over effect. 
Yes. Yes, now nah, it comes with the default over effects. Can you see what's happening? When I hover, do you see that the team will be kind of dark? When I. Uh, I pass. You can see it comes with everything. See, it even comes with this stuff. If you notice, if the mm. color is dark, eh, it will give a light, what is it called? A light um, test color. If the background color is light, it will give a dark test color. Can you see what I'm having here? Look at this uh, yellow. You know that if I put white text in yellow, it will not be nice. So then I added the black text for me. Yeah. Look at this one. Now, let me show you something. There's what we call outline button color as well. So if I come back here, I'm coming. Let me just show you this last one before we end the class. Time has gone far. I'm coming. I'm coming. So let me close this. Right? So what shall we happen? So that you see the effect of the So that you see the over effect clearly. Now, if I come back here, hmm? I can do something like this. Let me just say each arrow. Right? I can do something like this. BTN dot BTN outline primary. Right? And say click me. What shot I will get? Um BTN. I'm coming. Sorry, BTN. BTN. So this is what I'm having. Now, this is a BTN outline, right? If I over, this is what is happening. Can you see what I'm having? Now, if I do the same stuff for BTN outline, what's it called? Outline warning. What's what I will get? Now, you can see that it's yellow. When I over, it will be dark, right? For this one, it will be light. So, can you see what is happening? So, the booster comes with over effect and so, so many other things, right? So, be second of that. So, as you can see, we just learned what's it called the basics of Bootstrap. You know, like I said, when you, whenever you're learning anything that is a kind of CSS, um, should I say, uh, I don't know how to call it, when you're learning anything that has to do with CSS, the best way to learn it, right, is by projects. You get so what I just did now, I just prep your mind, um, tell you that okay, fine, these are the things we see in Bootstrap, and so on and so forth as we go further. So um in the next class we pick up a project and do it with Bootstrap you get. So just a simple landing page whereby we apply more of um Bootstrap stuff, things like um we apply most of the components, right? Accordion, um what's it called? Um modas. So you see what you see what the model is, what an accordion is, right? Then we apply things like um, okay, accordions are so sometimes cop up up as well. We apply the nav bar, you see the hamburger stuff and so on and so forth, right? So that's it. So in our next class, we'll do a project with Bootstrap. So is there any question before we go? Questions before we go? I will also upload this video so that you can watch it and, you know, get prepared for next class. Is there any question before we go? No, there's no question. Okay. So thanks for joining us in this class. I hope to see you in the next class. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.